have started house fires. I could have <laughs> like cooked meth. I could have done all this. But I was playing sports. And when yeah. I wasn't playing sports, I was tired because I just had practice. So right. I'd sleep or like chill with my high school girlfriend right. and eat. I ate so much food. So, yeah. <laughs> but like if I didn't have that structure or anything, that so much free time. Exactly. For young kids, they drown in a cup of water mm -hmm. because they think that this is real life when mm -hmm. they see through the, through a phone but what they don't understand is everything's edited everything's yeah. like put through a lot of filters mm -hmm. and like even from like a girl's perspective those it's girls all don't fake. look like that bro. Right. i'm going inside i literally have like my wallet but i don't know how much money i have because my phone's dead and so i'm like asking people for their phone charger and it's just I ended up walking for like a couple miles. Now I'm dehydrated and worried. And so You're I'm like, going on a spiritual, a spiritual journey at this point. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> fighting demons, man. <laughs> when someone has something going, the people around them will support Nike, Adidas. Yeah. Like they don't know you, bro. Yeah. But they're you, just but then your friend, fire, bro. Yeah. Like you're it's just, like, but your, but your friends are starting a restaurant. Yeah. They're starting a clothing brand, yeah. bro. I don't care if your shirts are ugly, man. Like I'll give you feedback. Hey, I'm gonna buy a shirt and some pair of shorts. Yeah. These are whack but do yeah. better, but yeah. I'm going to support you. Cause I know with Nike, they don't know who I am. Right. Like, you know, a hundred percent do it. Okay. Listen to the man. <laughs>
And I'm over here like walking to class with my buddies, like throwing snowballs and they're like, can you just stop? Stop being like, a child. There's snow on the ground. <laughs> I haven't seen this. <laughs> All right. So I know a little bit about your college thing, mm -hmm. like your college story, but I, I can't wait to hear the nitty gritty. All right. So what, did you make it to freshman year, sophomore year? Like when, when did things start changing for you? So before we get into some okay. of the controversial stuff, <laughs> I'll start off my freshman year. Okay. <laughs> so like I said, sports have played like a huge role throughout my whole life. So my freshman year, I was just there for football. I was mm -hmm. just there for football. But then how I said I had my love for baseball, I still had a love for baseball, but I couldn't play baseball and football. So I did the next big thing. You know, I lived in one of these houses on a hill and then back there, they were doing um like practice before um like in the fall before it started getting cold and they were throwing these big ass they look like toothpicks they're, they're called javelin <laughs> okay and so i ended up joining the track team my freshman year okay doing track and field and then throwing javelin and then i can't have the second longest throw at that college nice and i came i was the only first place finish in conference with little do they know you just picked it up you're like oh literally just stick? learned what is literally stick? just learned and so <laughs> i was doing that and then covid hit my sophomore mm, year. So okay. we ended up uh, finishing the football season. And then when um, they kicked us out, second semester, sophomore year. So we had to do all that online. And then first semester, junior year, I came back. We had football, but we didn't have a season. So we were just practicing. Oh, that's horrible. And then um, <clears throat> I came back with a million followers on TikTok my junior okay. year. Okay. And so... I was already kind of like a rowdy party or like, you know, I like to have fun in college. And right. so people already know, like knew me, but like, this is a school where I went with um, the Rooney family. They own the Steelers. Okay. And so like the branch chairman of JP Morgan's son goes, so like I was broke. Like my family doesn't have money like that. So yeah. I'm going to school with all these ritzy ass people. Right? So is, is the school like a prestigious, a prestigious It was $73,000. Oh uh, a year. God. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh my God. Yeah. No, no. Okay. It was, uh, I went for academics. Okay. So kind of smart, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, I went to play football, not school. No, so, I'm, kidding. So, so, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. So real quick. So, uh, financially with, uh, with Dennison, mm -hmm. was it partially football scholarship? Most of it academic, like a mixture of, of two, two or three things. Or? So at the time, the, uh, person recruiting me, his wife worked in, um, admissions, Clutch. Yeah, clutch. <laughs> and so I think annually I was only paying six thousand dollars. That's a bro for seventy three to six. Yeah, no, and it's only like I wish I would have gotten a degree because it might be worth a hundred thousand right. by the time I'm done. So mm -hmm. but um yeah, no, I was super fortunate to go there and I was looking at other schools too. Um Rensselaer Polytech Institute out of New York and a car, like a bunch of um very good like northern football schools, but they were yeah. also really high like uh academically. Like So was that always a goal for you? Like I could like a good academic school, not just football as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean I was I was on the straight and narrow all throughout high school. I never nice. partied. I was always like the star student, you gotcha. know, I mean, I was kind of a jerk off a little bit, but <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> that's whatever. So I was always like the one who set the good image for, and what um, was your, uh, so if I was like someone mm -hmm. trying to get you to come to my school, right. Mm -hmm. What, what's your resume? Like what's your GPA? How many community service hours? If you remember, I, uh, I think I had like a 3.6 GPA coming out of high school. Nice. Um, my nice. community service hours, I had a bunch cause I volunteered at, um, I love kids. Like I love volunteering. Like nice. I liked, um, hanging out and watching Thunkey's kid play and like hanging out <laughs> with Ava. Like that's always something that I love to do because growing up, like my, like my real father was never really in my life. So I was always gotcha. in and out without a father figure. And so that's something Same. that if I could go back and give mm -hmm. to kids, that's Same. what I love to do, you know? So my community service hours were not crazy impressive, but I think I had like maybe a hundred, I had yeah. to do like a certain amount to get scholarships. Yeah. So, that, that's why I was asking because yeah. you were in such good standing mm -hmm. to get, yeah. Like, you know, mm -hmm. get money. That's, that means you did well. And oh, I got a all those lot aspects. of local scholarships. <laughs> nice. So let's go back to your junior year. So you come back, you have, you have a million followers mm -hmm. on TikTok and then it's post COVID. So that first semester back, right. I went from never getting in trouble with the school <laughs> to, and I was doing the same shit. I just had an eye on me. I had a million eyes on me actually. And I had a whole right. bunch of people who were like haters, you know? And I hate to say the word haters cause it's whatever. Cause I was kind of disrespectful at times, Yeah. but it was part because I was pissed off that people weren't leaving me alone. Mm -hmm. And so I went from never getting in trouble, never getting written up to people anonymously submitting my Snapchat stories, my 
what? TikToks. Like what, like screen recording, whatever you Sending put? it to the Dean of Students. Oh my God. Yeah, no, a bunch of lamas. And so I went to a liberal arts school. So okay. you had people who are very far left leaning mm -hmm. in a lot of their politics and views. Oh boy. And I respect their opinion, mm -hmm. but it was detrimental to everything and anything I did. I remember I posted a TikTok, right? There is a, uh, on Tinder, yeah. it's about objectifying yourself. You know, you want to make yourself the most appealing version of yourself. You know, I'm not yeah. going to swipe right on your personality. Yeah. I don't know you. <laughs> You're right. And so I posted a TikTok. I was, I was a bit under the influence. Yeah. And so I was just like, nope, 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 nope. Yep. <laughs> and so a couple of those girls were offended because I did put it on TikTok. Oh my God. And so. That's the whole point of the app. And so I said, I'm sorry. I wasn't attracted to you. <laughs> But I got written up six times and Dennison like made me write essays to apologize. Oh my God. And I was sitting there and talking to the Dean of students. And I'm like, what, what is this going to accomplish? Like I, I do social media. Yeah. Like I'm always going to have an eye on me. Like you're not going to stop. Is this really something like how many essays am I going to have to write? And you know? then those six write-ups and what, that was in one semester? One semester. Jesus Christ. One semester. Yeah. And I, granted I did deserve at least two of them <laughs> but, <laughs> because we had COVID restrictions. We can have anybody in and like, yeah, it's like it was it's like, college. it's, I know we couldn't have parties. We couldn't, but by that time, I, my whole mindset was kind of like, I, I was kind of a hot shot. You know, I was mm -hmm. hot head. I was like, Oh dude, I'm the man. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Little enough. I, yeah, I found my kryptonite. So, <laughs> but then, um, so after that semester, I go back to the keys. So this is spring semester of your junior year. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was actually planning on finishing my junior year. Mm -hmm. So COVID, everybody has their own opinion on it. And so um, we had super strict restrictions coming back. And at that time, my focus wasn't on what do I need to do to go back to Denison? Mm -hmm. It was more of my social media. Cause it was like booming at the time, you know, I was like growing crazy amounts. And, um, I had to go get like a COVID test every two weeks and submit it and like uh, do all the screening and stuff and living in the keys like that isn't easy to do. And yeah. one, it's like at that time I wasn't making any money on social media yeah. and you have to pay to do that. My parents don't have a lot of money to do that. Yeah. And so um, every two weeks is awful. Yeah. And so what I did is one of my friends on the team, I won't say a name, <laughs> sent me his COVID stuff. Okay. And I forged my name on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I sent it to him. And it worked right until I went and tested positive for COVID. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and so when that happened, I felt horrible because I live in a six man and we were all back. And like at that time, it was like the bubonic plague. You know, you got yeah. it. Everyone around you is going to die. God, you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Holy water. Like, <laughs> and so they all had to go into quarantine. And so I also had to go into quarantine, mm -hmm. but they put me in a different room until this day. I didn't have actual COVID. I had the antibodies for COVID, but at mm -hmm. the time on tests, it showed up, as up a, the same way, the same way. Right. So they put me in a room full of like these sick people. <laughs> right. And I felt bad because all my boys who just came back for their junior year mm -hmm. got separated too. And they had to spend a week. Me, I was like, fuck this shit. I'm out. <laughs> I, I had my girlfriend at the time drive from Michigan to pick me up. Oh my God. Okay. And so I, I left on a pretty solid note. I broke out of quarantine <laughs> I broke out. I, I was walking around campus. I was like, this school's a joke. Like very. I remember stuck. that video. I remember yeah. a, a specific video yeah. of you, like just clowning Dennison. And yeah. you're like, no, the school, this is school. Mm -hmm. that. And I was like, I mm -hmm. wasn't in the loop. So I was like, I wonder why he's going off yeah. like this. You mm -hmm. know, it's his third year there. I'm like, I wonder what's yeah. going on. And so, I never asked you. And looking back, I, I was a complete jackass. <laughs> I take all that back. Like I love Dennison now. <laughs> like, and so, but at the time it was just so much like built up emotion towards the school. You felt targeted too. So I don't Oh, I was you. a huge target. Right. Like all my friends, like I had um, like people clowning me on social media, like, and the school has not that I condone fighting, but some people do deserve to get punched in the mouth. Yeah. But we have a one punch rule. So you throw one punch and you're out. And so <laughs> okay. you have all these kids talking shit and they don't do anything. So you're like, I have a video of me snagging this kid's phone, taking his beanie, like throwing it down the hill. And I was like, swing, swing. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he's like, my dad's chin. the best lawyer. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> right here. Yeah. And so I was definitely, I had a huge target on my back and it was like, wow. kind of, uh, kind of sad at the time. Cause I did, I wouldn't say threw away a great opportunity. I just didn't finish. 
something and that's one thing as an athlete you know you're yeah. taught never to quit on a team right and so but also to play devil's advocate mm-hmm. nobody was going through what you were going exactly through. everyone was mm-hmm. a regular student not mm-hmm. being targeted doing the same stuff you were doing but just exactly. because you had a target on your back mm-hmm. it was like constant you know and it, and it really started to get to me when my actions <clears throat> not even my actions but just me being like the social media guy yeah. started to affect my friends who weren't in it. That sucks. And so when that started to happen, I was like, okay, this is getting somewhere where like, I'm, I'm not feeling comfortable anymore yeah. because I'm affecting those people who aren't wreaking the same benefits of social media that I am, but We're they're getting the going, bad stuff. Exactly. They're going through the consequences, but not the rewards. And so that's when I was like, I have to make a decision. And so it was to, Oh, well, and another part of the reason is uh, I, I ended up starting the OnlyFans <laughs> okay. back uh, before my second semester. Okay. So I went back with some guap. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> OnlyFans booming. Yeah, yeah. and so um, that totally played because I had no money growing up. Mm-hmm. And I come back with a couple thousand. And I'm like, oh, I'm hot shit. You're like, yo, I got two racks. <laughs> and let's I'm go. Like, let's go, baby. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I was just a cocky, like, dickhead to say the least. But a lot of it, w- I mean, some of it was justified. But a lot of it, for the most part, it wasn't. And so, bro, but you're still like, how old do you know? I'm 23. Bro, imagine back, bro. Let's. Hey, <laughs> at that if, age. You're, if you're a stud athlete and your name is Esteban and you don't have an OnlyFans, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Bro, like, this name is like the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so, going from, I can't wait to get into like the next part of your life, mm-hmm. but I just want to cover this little piece and then we can take off. So, um, from high school to college, do you feel like you were prepared uh, educationally and like sports wise? Did you feel like a change of pace or you felt like at home? Like- so without sports, I'd probably be in like jail, prison or something like honestly, <laughs> okay. honestly, yeah. because my mom worked every day. So did my stepdad Same. worked every single day hours. Yeah. And so you weren't really supervised. I wasn't that. supervised. Mm-hmm. I could have started house fires. I could have <laughs> like cooked meth. I could have done all this shit. <laughs> But I was playing sports. And when yeah. I wasn't playing sports, I was tired because I just had practice. So right. I'd sleep or like chill with my high school girlfriend right. and eat. I ate so much food. So, yeah. <laughs> but like if I didn't have that structure or anything that so much free time, exactly. For a young kid. And I didn't have any like extra, like I wasn't in like drama club or anything. Yeah. So like the, that's a big reason why I had a scholarship and I could have went to any in-state tuition for free. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I was in take stock for uh, kids, which is like um, a great thing. If people want to look into it, it's for um, families. Take, that, take stock, you said? Yeah. Take stock in okay. children. And so it's okay. like for um, low income families with uh, kids who may not be able to afford to go to college. Okay. And I, I was in it since seventh to 12th grade. And wow. so if I stay in it and then they pay for my college for free. I don't know. I haven't heard of it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, it's actually really nice. I, th- I don't, I know it's in Monroe County for sure, but it's all across Florida. And so I knew that if I went to college, cause I, I never partied, I never drank, I never did anything in high school mm. going straight to college. I mean, I still did party a lot, but it was with like my boys on the football team. You know, yeah. we just bust our ass for six days. So, you know, one day a week, Let we would be yeah. like to have fun. Yeah. And so my biggest thing was I need to play sports in college so I can stay on top of my stuff and I have a structure, have some kind of, yeah. a structure. Yeah. And so sports literally without sports, I don't know where I'd been. But I wouldn't have been in a good place. And yeah. I still take a lot of the lessons that I learned from sports and use them today. So that's cool, bro. So I, I feel like you're going to be split answering this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Right, go ahead. Go so, ahead. What's your, so what's your takeaway from college? Like positive or negative, you know? Or is uh, it like half and half? <clears throat> like, you know, like what do you, how do you feel about it? So I have mixed emotions, right? I figured. <laughs> I Should everybody go to college? No. Right. Some people just shouldn't go to college. Like there's a crazy statistic that I learned and it's like for every three people who work in a specialized field or every five people that work in a specialized field, like plumbing, electricity, whatever, like for every five that retire every year to replace them. And so that that's a very lucrative industry to go into. And it's only six months of school compared to four years, because now you have people that are like majoring in gender studies Right. And it's like, that's a great thing to do, but it's not going to, how does it apply to real life? How are you going to, what are you going to teach in like, other than like what I can think of? I know I have friends that did gender studies and they're trying to Mm -hmm. teach queer 
queer gender studies and like liberal arts colleges. Mm -hmm. That's such a narrow field that you can't really- Very small percentage to yeah. get into. And so I think, um, I wish I would have graduated college. I mean, that, that door hasn't closed, bro. No, I you mean, know, I have my AA, yeah. so it's like, I could go back and do it. And I really want to, I, I told my parents, I was like, I want to get my doctorate one you, day. And you can get, you can do it online too. Yeah. Like you can still do it. And so, young. well, I, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed on going back to campus, having a good time. Hey! <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that one, but, <laughs> but college isn't for everybody. If it's something that you want to do, do it. I mean, it's an experience and it teaches you, it's a big step from, high school living with your parents and then going and learning to be by yourself. Cause that's uh, like, I learned a lot. Like I learned how to cook. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Hey bro. Hey, so that was ramen cool. noodles can only get you so far. Oh, no, you got to put the <laughs> eggs in there too. <laughs> that can get you far. Yeah. <laughs> but eh, college was a great experience for me. You know, everybody should experience some type of independence. So that, that's where I, I got mine. I agree. Okay. So now, now let's get into right after college. Right. So, you didn't graduate, not a big deal, you know, mm -hmm. um, but now your life is taking a turn that from an outsider's perspective, mm -hmm. you didn't really see coming. So mm -hmm. what, what was your mindset going from? All right. So now my social media, it, it's like, like, so by your junior or senior year, where, where were you at? Like one point something mil, two mil, whatever so like, where were you at? I was, at, I think one point, were you on the, um, the flag football trip where we went up to, I think the panhandle? And we stayed Panama city. Yeah. Pa yeah. Panama city. Yeah, I, super I, cold. Yeah. Oh no, I don't think so. I, I just hit like 1.3 million. I think it was okay. in January. Okay. Yeah. It was it, a cold. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, worlds yeah. like two years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. And so I had just hit 1.3 million. I filmed that video in the bathtub <laughs> and that was like right after I, um, was that right after? No, that was like six months of me being in LA, like kind okay. of fresh, you know? And so when I moved to LA, it wasn't, something that I was like, yeah, I'm moving to LA. It was like, do that or move home. So my parents mm. didn't even know that I left college. Oh my God. So I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I left college and then my, my girlfriend at the time picked me up. I lived with her and her That's parents. That's the Michigan girl. Yeah. Okay. I lived with her and her parents or her mom and her sister for like three and a half weeks. Okay. Trying, trying to, to figure say, your life out. Well, cause at the time I managed a few girls on OnlyFans as well. I had my okay. own. And so there was still money coming in on top of like a bunch of stuff. And yeah. so I was like, I called up my roommate because at the time, or not my roommate, my current roommate, and he was like the smartest person that I had met mm -hmm. at the Miami mansion I was staying at for a little bit nice. before I started my OnlyFans. I didn't have a bank <laughs> account at the time, so I actually used his account <laughs> info for a 50% split. So he was happy too. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. And so I called him. I'm like, bro, I'm having a mental breakdown. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't go back home. Can imagine. And I already knew he was moving to LA. Okay. And he was trying to get me to move with him anyway. And I was like, no, I got, I got to <clears throat> focus on school. I got to go back. Going from one coast to the other. Yeah. Not even telling your parents yet that you left. I didn't tell my parents oh my until God. I signed the lease. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, it's already done, but I'm, I'm going to Cali. <laughs> yeah, no. And so when they found out, they were like, uh, it's so funny because my pops, he has a friend named Pablo, right? And he watches my TikToks like crazy. <laughs> and he he's looking at my pop and his name's Mike. He goes, Yo, I think your son's in California. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. And so I get a call and like, I'm not answering them oh because I, I moved out there with him for the week and we didn't have a place to stay. We were apartment hunting like this, bro. Oh and so we God. found one, we liked it and we got it. And so that's when I finally called my parents. Like, and I was, Yo, I'm not homeless. <laughs> yeah, I was for a week though, bro. I was you have surfing. so many stories. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's, we're not even in it yet. <laughs> no. wow. So it was wild. But nah, so I have a pretty nice place. You know, I'm doing yeah. pretty good. So yeah. they're, they're, they were worried in the beginning because I moved out there. I'm 21. Yeah. Like freshly 21. And then, you, and then like you said earlier, like you were restricted from everything. Yeah. So you go from not being able to do anything to be able to do whatever you want. No structure, no nothing. And it's that's all on Esteban. Yeah. 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 And that's, I mean, that came <laughs> back and bit me a little bit, you know, the no structure thing that I needed. I kind of figured out why I needed it. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is what I was scared of. But, no, my structure was my plan. Okay. Move out there with the girlfriend. Oh, that's the, that's the, that was, you. and so she did. She moved out there for six months and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then we broke up <laughs> and then it was downhill Ooh, again. <laughs> too free. He was too free. He was, oh man. Oh. It was, it was a lot of fun though. <laughs> but now I'm like, 
I'm like, okay, I'm golfing. I'm doing good. I'm making my morning coffee. Okay. I'm good. And so, yeah. That's what adults do. They make their coffee in the morning. I make my avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's been, it's really good, man. Okay. So, so let's go back to your mindset. So you told your parents, so like, I'm your mom, mm-hmm. but Esteban, what are you going to do for money? You know, like, what do you like? Did you tell them, look, I have this going on or you're like, I'm going to figure it out. It's so crazy. So just how I said, like I did the only fan stuff, right? Mm-hmm. When I for, I, I'll never forget it. December 18th, 28th or 2020. You knew the date in there. Oh, dude, hundred <laughs> percent. I've never made like that much money in my life, let alone that fast, right. you know? And right. so I, I did that. I'm sending my mom screenshots, screenshots, screenshots. I'm yeah. okay. <laughs> no, of the, of the statements. Mm-hmm. And so we're popping champagne bottles. I have this really epic picture off to show you of me like nice. popping a champagne bottle off of like one, one of Jason, my- Jason, we'll, we'll definitely, if we can put that in later, that yeah, epic we'll, picture of him. Yeah, actually, we'll put it, we'll put it in. No, but you just have to right now. Perfect. Yeah. And, um, I'll, make, I'll make a note of it. <laughs> and so my mom, she's such a G for this. So she works for Walgreens in the photo department. She takes that picture and my OnlyFans statements and makes me a plaque. Oh! So Let's she's go. a G for that. Mom's like, that's my baby. <laughs> yeah. And so we're, we're going to need that. We're yeah. going to need that. <laughs> we're going to need that picture. <laughs> and so it was so sick. But um, that was before she found out I was moving to LA. <laughs> oh, I think I'm so proud of you. What? Dude, where'd you go? <laughs> she, she knew that I was making money. And like, that's another thing. Like I put so much time and effort into social media mm-hmm. and I had the university against me. I, even my parents were against me in the beginning. Cause they're like, what are you doing? Putting in all this time and effort it's on a, these stupid videos. It's a different videos. generation. Bro. I know. It's hard to explain yeah. something mm-hmm. like that to someone that didn't have a phone. They have flip phones, Nokia's before beepers, that it was wired. Yeah. Beepers, carrier bro. pigeons <laughs> back then. <laughs> I, I think, it's I hard. think the, I think the, the wildest thing maybe for them, I, and I don't know them that well, mm-hmm. I don't mean to be respectful, but they were probably like, man, my son is just dumb. And they're probably like, on his phone. But then yeah, they're okay. probably like, who is going to give this guy money? Like, who's yeah. giving thousands yeah. of dollars? Yeah. 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 Right? Okay. No, wild. <laughs> That's probably what something like what happened. <laughs> they, they didn't know what OnlyFans were. And their first thing was, uh, they're giving you, you money. Porn? So they're just giving you money. Like, yeah. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> like, bro, That's their minds crazy. are blown. But now I have my pops, friends watching me cracking up on TikTok, And my mom's over here. Like, Bro, some of the, my mom's a trip for real. She was like, there's this guy at this work that I work at and he's gay. And, you know, I showed him some pictures of you Oh my goodness. and he would eat you. And I'm like, mom. And she's like, what's the link to your, and I was like, no, no, <laughs> no, we yeah, ain't no. doing this. We ain't doing I didn't even reply. I didn't reply <laughs> until she was like, Hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm at a friend's house. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> But now they support me and they love me. And so I love Very that cool. too. So. So, so something I definitely wanted to bring up, but I didn't want to get ahead of the timeline was something that I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Um, you have been very good at something that I try to pride myself in mm-hmm. is adapting to the times. Mm-hmm. So not just because your back was against the wall, but there are other people in the world that their backs are against the wall, mm-hmm. but they play the victim card. They're like, oh my God, I can't make money. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. So what I've noticed is you saw an opportunity with TikTok, you hopped on it. Mm-hmm. You saw an opportunity with OnlyFans when it was fresh, you mm-hmm. hopped on it. Yep. You know, so like, do you have a certain mindset to new trends? Or are you just like, oh, I see an opportunity, I'm going to take it. Like, what's your mindset on that? So it, it all, and I'm not doing this because this is a sports or like You're right. No, hey, it let it rip. all circles back to the competitive competitiveness that I have in sports, right? Okay. So I did, I started TikTok because my friend Jackson had TikTok, right? Okay. And he was getting recognized. Shout out to Jackson. Yeah, Jackson <laughs> McDonald for I just saw him at FIU. He's the homie for real. <laughs> um, he had like 300,000. I had girls at Denison my sophomore year going, oh my God, how do you know this guy? Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's my boy. I'm what like, do you bro, mean? what are you talking about? I'll FaceTime him. <laughs> and so I'm like, bro, what is all this attention that he's getting? And so I'm like, oh, he probably pulls, you right. know? Yeah. And so I'm like, <laughs> all right, bet. So COVID hit, we're chilling together. <clears throat> and and he's going live on TikTok and he's getting money. And like me and all my boys, we, we called us the bung bros. Cause he the lived in a, bros? <laughs> cause he lived in a bungalow and we did all of our like filming in there and like okay. for TikToks. And so we'd go live and we're acting stupid and we'd have people give us money. And I'm like, I'm not gonna lie. Kids like six, five. He looks like JFK. <laughs> he, a, but I'm like, I am definitely funnier than this guy. And so I'm like, boom. All right. So I start posting like 10 to 15 videos a day. On so, you, so, so you always knew you wanted to do comedy like yeah. in the beginning. Okay. And okay. I was like, I kind of just ran up to the camera one day talking like a kid and it blew up. <laughs> and so 
I started with that because I was so competitive. I was a bit jealous of him too at the time, but just like how you are in sports, you know, if someone's better than you, you're jealous, but you work towards it. You could either let it break you or make you. And so yeah. Yeah, it definitely pushed me. And so then I saw people on OnlyFans making a lot of money and I'm like, what? Yeah. I want that. And right. so I saw everybody else doing it. And I'm like, I'm going to do it better. And so I launched it and I literally shoved it down everyone's throat on social media saying that I had one. But it's all because of like, I'm competitive. Like I like to yeah. compete. And so now it's more of like, I want to like start a business mm -hmm. oriented around the industry that I'm in now. Yeah. And so um, I'm, I'm just competing with myself now. I mean, I kind of have other people around me, but I, it's not so much like the fame that I want. It's the fortune. So of course, yeah, yeah. cause you can have, cause this is a big topic that I've been wanting to talk about. I'm like, who mm -hmm. better than Stevie, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but you can have a large, I have friends that have mm -hmm. large followings, but they don't monetize themselves yeah. well or not even themselves, just a service, mm -hmm. something bro. Yeah. Like, like you are a walking advertising mm -hmm. thing. Like if you talk to the right people, mm -hmm. you can promote for them or yourself or whatever, you know? Yeah, so, so I think you do a really good job of getting ahead of the mm -hmm. trend and like looking for ways to monetize mm -hmm. your reach, you know? And like, just to put an example, so I have a management for my TikTok, right? Nice. So they'll, <clears throat> they'll come out and like give me brand deals because a lot of things that creators can start doing is instead of relying on companies to pay them to promote their own product, create a product themselves and use what they get paid for by these companies to use, which is their plat their platform, you know? Mm -hmm. So these Cut companies the middle, are, man. yeah, exactly. And so that's what I've been telling all my friends in LA. I'm like, bro, okay, you do college drinking bits, like create a shotgun tool or something. Like then you could sell that and all the profits yours, not here, you know, I'll pay you $2,000 to make a video while you make me 10,000 on return. And so it's like, that's something that I'm trying to learn myself, but whatever I do next, I, it's going to be faceless. Yeah. And so I don't want like my image attached to it at all. Yeah. I just want to be able to make something. You want the product to speak for itself. Exactly. And so use the platforms of other people because what I'm working on now is going to be pretty crazy. I have to tell you off air. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. Okay. No it's, worries. <laughs> it's pretty sick. You know, something, something else um, that's pretty cool. I had a thing here, but I took it off. Something's pretty cool. I, I think I heard it in a, like in a big podcast. I think it was, and I don't know if it was the uh, drink champs or one of those big podcasts, but they were talking about um, product placement. Mm -hmm. So the guy was talking about like the, the bottles they had in the mm -hmm. back and everything. Like, are those people paying you? It's like, what do you have it there? So like mm -hmm. something to go along with what, what uh, uh, someone was saying is if you have a following, you know, whether, whether it is 10,000, 20,000, a thousand, you know, well, whatever you're we about. have a following, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a product on it and you got a video that performed well, mm -hmm. you can send it to them. It's like, I can, we you can do this again. Yeah, like, yeah. We can do this again, or I can put another product there. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's a great, like, that's a good strategy mm -hmm. to, you know, I mean, get brands behind you. A, a lot of podcasts um, are sponsored by like companies that, you know, like G Fuel, for instance, they sponsor mm -hmm. a bunch of Twitch streamers. And mm -hmm. all it is is, you have it in the back yeah. and you say, this is sponsored by G fuel. You drink it. Even if you don't like it, who cares? Whatever. I mean, you're telling it to the people, which is, you know, I remember a lot. Was it last year? Whatever. It doesn't matter. So Ronaldo, mm -hmm. he, bro, this guy's a specimen. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't do anything. And one day it was a big deal because there was a Coke bottle in front of all the reporters. And he goes, he puts it to the side and he puts a water bottle. He goes, water. Mm. That was a huge, like Coca-Cola's money went there. Something oh, went yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's it's crazy how somebody with a large following mm -hmm. can control the masses. Exactly. Like, you know, Coke is bad. Yeah. Ronaldo didn't Obviously. surprise anybody. Yeah. But just because <laughs> one human being went like this, put the Coke bottle out of the mm -hmm. side of the camera and put water in front, mm -hmm. it was like a huge yeah, deal. Yeah, he doesn't want his likeness to be used to portray something that he doesn't believe in. Yeah. Right? But that's where a lot of people in LA, like, they'll sell their, they'll sell sell their souls, but like mm -hmm. literally we'll just cash out for a dollar and be like, yeah. all right, this is super bad for everyone, but they're paying me 10,000. Boom. You know, I, I just saw a video yesterday of, was it, it's a guy that runs a big platform. It's either Netflix or IG or someone, whatever the, the death water or whatever, what's it called? Oh yeah. Liquid yeah, yeah. death. Mm -hmm. His advertising plan was I'm going to promote this as something super bad because yeah. everyone loves bad stuff mm -hmm. and it's just water. Yeah. He used to work His for someone. His marketing plan was genius. Yeah. 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 And I'm not, and it's in a, uh, a tin can too, which is And cool. he made it look like a beer can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it's genius. genius. It looks like Modelo, you know? If you didn't even see it, I was like, oh, wow, okay. And then now he went from, 
what was the number, man? It was like 700 million or like mm. it went from being nothing. Crazy. To, and that's just mm. all marketing and just marketing. advertising yeah. is like, it's mm. insane. If you just think a certain way, mm. you can make something happen with a brand that doesn't exist. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally have some like experience in this field because I worked for Young and Reckless Yeah, and I was working on the TikTok. Ten. Yeah. And so I was, I still have their, I, hopefully they don't see it, but I still have their TikTok <laughs> account logged in on my phone, even though I don't work for them anymore. <laughs> So I, I would never, I haven't even logged into it, but it is on my phone. Yeah. And so I was like promoting their product by using my likeness, but I had mm. full creativity over the video. And then when they started taking away my creativity, I was like, this isn't going to work. It kind of put you in a box a little bit. Yeah. It was like, you know, you want to, cause Young Reckless is from like a TV show on MTV back in the day, like Rob Deerdex Fantasy Factory. Oh, I didn't know that. Robin Big. Okay. And so, um, Drama was the founder of it, even though he's like half owner now, mm. but, um, they wanted me to bring it to like a younger crowd. And okay. I was, I was going viral. I was like. Basically, oh, I'm young and reckless. I work for young and reckless, but fuck this company. I could do whatever I want. Like, oh, mm. they bought me this yacht, even yeah. though it's like my friend's yacht. That yeah, they don't have to know. Like, the, <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, I'm using the company card for this first class flight, even though I didn't. They didn't yeah. give me the credit card, yeah. but it was like just portraying it. And I'm wearing their clothes. And so people are like, oh, shit, like, okay, I could get behind this. And yeah. then they're like, oh, you're not like pushing the clothing or the products. One, the shirts, like the clothing for the most part at the time wasn't. The most likable. I only mm -hmm. had like a couple shirts that I liked. And so I tried to get graphic designers on board and everything. Okay. It's kind of hard to talk to big companies, but I did as much as I could. The the best thing I can compare that to is like an artist signing to a label. Mm -hmm. And then what got the artist there was a certain way of being. Exactly. And then the label's like, look, you got to be like this and like that. Yep. And then the, the artist is like, this is not even me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, And you see that with, I'm a big fan of music. Most of us yeah. are. And I think that really explains why an artist goes like this. And then on a certain point, they're like, they do things for like the masses. Yeah. And they kind of sell out. It puts them in a box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you mm -hmm. see music change like that. Yeah. In different genres too. Not just mm -hmm. one specific genre. No, yeah. hundred percent. And I mean, I, granted, I was getting kind of lazy as well. Cause I kind of mm -hmm. lost interest as soon yeah. as like a couple of things. They try to make you change whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right. And so we like, that was a good breakup. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm still cool with the owner now. Mm -hmm. I literally got young and reckless tattooed on my foot for TikTok. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. But it happened. It was a great experience. Now yeah. I know I learned so much from that. And like, shit, it's only going to add to my resume. Nice. So we talked a little bit about the negativity and the hate or whatever. So I wanted to directly ask you, um, cause I'm, I'm really asking this. I'm not trying to make this topic dramatic. Mm -hmm. Um, there has been a very big rise in, uh, young people killing themselves like mm -hmm. suicides. And it's mostly cause of social media bullying yep. and stuff like that. So if there's some kids out there that are dealing with some being bullied and social media mm -hmm. and stuff like that, how do you deal with um, negativity coming your way or haters? Like, so this is kind of see when I was in high school, I, I was getting bullied too in high school. I'm not going to lie. Like there was some crazy rumors that happened and came out and I was like hating life for a second. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I definitely see, but like social media from when I was in high school till now, Exploded. Only, exploded. It's yeah. even 10 times bigger now. And so like, I don't really know what I would do if I was in their position now, but all I can say is that just turn the phone off. Right. It's like step away from it. You know, even if people are drilling you, just make to people who are anybody who's contemplating it or whatever. This is, I feel like suicide is a very selfish thing. Okay. And, and I'm saying this, not because I don't want to be like controversial or anything, but I'll explain why I think it's selfish because you are ending your pain, but everybody who loved you, everybody around you, you're putting that pain onto all of them. Like you might not even show signs of it, which happens a lot. And then you have these people who love and care about you thinking that they could have done something. Now they have to live with that pain. Mm -hmm. So you're not ending any pain. Right. You're actually making it bigger. You're making it 10 times more. You're putting it onto your parents, your friends, everybody who really love and care about you all because of a current situation that you were in, yeah. you know, but for anybody who's contemplating it or going through it, just, it gets better, man. It, it really does. And like social media is honestly a very toxic place if you let it be. Yeah. But if you just try to block all that stuff out. I'm telling you the problems you have today will not be the same problems you'll have in a year. And that's the biggest thing. Like a lot of uh, teenagers or kids, they drown in a cup of water mm -hmm. because they think that this is real life when mm -hmm. they see through the, through a phone. But what they don't understand is everything's edited. Everything's yeah. like put through a lot of filters mm -hmm. and like, 
even from like a girl's perspective, those it's girls don't fake. look like that, it's bro. All fake. Like it's you BBLs, know what I'm lip injections, bro. But a lot of these kids, they don't know that because yeah. I'm 30, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like in that gray area mm -hmm. where I saw like MySpace, Facebook, yeah. you know? You saw the rise from the beginning. Right, you know? But there are some kids that they mm -hmm. grew up already with IG, TikTok yep. already existing. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to talk on that topic a little bit so mm -hmm. the kids that are watching understand that this isn't real life, guys. Like, you know, please be aware of that. All your favorite influencers, I've met them all and I can speak for myself as well. They all go through the same stuff you guys go through and they just... Like you think that on a bigger scale, even. on a bigger scale, yeah. and they're not going to post the negatives of their life because I won't get them the clicks. They'll post the positives because that's what the people want to see. Yeah. You know, so it's like you only like I've had my fair share. I've, I've gone through addiction since I've been in L.A. I've gone through depression. I've gone through so much stuff, but yeah. I don't post about it. Yeah. I have been a, my re, my last TikTok post or my Instagram post. Literally, I was addicted to um, Adderall. I was taking mm. like 140 milligrams a day. Mm. And like, that was killing me. And so yeah. I, I stopped that. I've been clean for like a month and a half, Good for you, man. but like my mental health and everything was on a sharp decline. I was drinking, partying, doing drugs. Yeah. And I was like, I can't do this. And like, it was all messing with my head and I just needed to take a step back, relax, look at life. It takes, but it takes a certain level of maturity mm -hmm. and self-awareness to understand like, all right, I have all this freedom that we went, that we exactly. talked about earlier. That's like because. I have all this freedom. This is my conscious choice mm -hmm. to do ABC or exactly. three, you know? So takes a certain level of maturity yeah. and awareness to, to mm -hmm. notice like, all right, I'm messing up. Cause a lot of times we victimize ourselves, yep. but we don't hold ourselves accountable exactly. for what we did wrong. Mm -hmm. We're like, Oh, that person made me like this. Or, nah. Oh man. Like mm -hmm. they might've influenced you, but at some point you decide to do things. At the end of the day, you have the final say in your actions, you know? Yeah. But like I said, just talk to someone. I yeah. talk to my roommate all the time, you know, when I'm experiencing something nice, even if you don't have anybody, they have apps now where you can talk to someone for free yeah. and they'll listen. So just talk it through, man. I, I nice. want to, I want to add something to that. Cause I think it's important. Um, so number one, what you said, talk to somebody therapy mm -hmm. is, is important. And sure. as men is always like, we've always have this, there's a stigma that yep. you can't talk about your feelings and all mm. it's important. Talk about your feelings, you know, and if you're a friend, and if you're, cause like we do this thing, right? Mm -hmm. As men, we do this thing where your friend says anything indicative of, of opening up will make a joke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, well, cause like, we don't know how to deal with, like exactly. it, it, we get nervous, like it gets <clears throat> getting weird in here right. and we'll make a joke. Right. We're or, being touchy feely. We're talking about yeah. emotions. It's, it's like, hard for us. <laughs> like, <laughs> girls, but, the girls are the opposite. The girls mm -hmm. are leaning into that. Anything. They lean Literally. into it and they lean into it. Like we don't. So, and then talk. And then the other thing, like what you said, um, reach out, man, therapy, reach Literally. out. And you know what? I wanted to add something as you guys were talking about, especially the, the social media generation and these kids are coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Everybody deals with depression and anxiety, but I get it where mm -hmm. the kids get it strongly, like with the social media. Yeah. Something that helped me a lot a couple of years ago when I was I was going through some stuff, man, is like I got involved in jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You had an outlet to like let loose. No, you know what it was? So first I changed and going to jujitsu changed my environment. Second, I got involved in something real. Mm -hmm. So like if you're dealing with all this stuff online, mm -hmm. it doesn't have, it could be jujitsu. I, I, I strongly advise for it to be something physical, but it doesn't mm -hmm. have to. It mm -hmm. could be a painting class, yeah. guitar lessons, get involved in, 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 a, mm -hmm. in a real activity that does not something involve. I started golfing. Any real, <laughs> any real activity that does not involve digital. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like, that'll help you get in a different place in a different state. Mm -hmm. And most likely if, and I really strongly, if it can be free, cause I know for the kids, you know, it's probably gonna have to be free, mm -hmm. but the more effort it takes, the better it's going to be. And, I, and I'll tell you why. And like, you know, I, I don't want to interrupt. For a big mm -hmm. The more effort it takes for you to do the activity, the better it is, whether it is that's far from your house or it costs money because anyone else that makes it there, they're not just there to, to waste, waste time. time yeah. exactly. yep. They made it there because <clears throat> it's, so you're going to get involved with a group of people. Like the classes I take, they're pretty expensive, Yeah, but nobody's in there playing games. Nope. Yeah. They're taking it serious. It's a good, so you get involved with a good group of people, you know, and, mm -hmm. but and like do, you said, do something physical. Our environment is important. So if you're surrounded by yeah. positivity like that, more than likely you're going to climb out of whatever, like, you know, negative at least it's going to help. At least yeah. it's going to help. It has to help. Yeah. yeah. Something to distract you from a lot of the problems, man. A lot of the time we just need a good distraction. Nice. That's a great, that's a great topic we cover. So 
what uh <laughs> <laughs> you're chuckling over there. <laughs> so what is no because i've already heard a few before we got on air <laughs> so oh. what, what, <laughs> what is the funniest or craziest story related to your career so far oh man i know that i'm yeah i know i know i know that's why i started laughing <laughs> oh man you're gonna have to give me a second to think <laughs> Or how about oh, more more recent? You know, something that... How recent? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my God. How, if you want... How, how, <laughs> let's make it PG, because I think, I think he's trying to... He's trying, <laughs> okay, to, okay, find a, he's trying to find a PG one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so... Yeah, censored. The uh, censored version, if you want. Okay. So, here we go. This is... Uh, th- I think this happened last year. And I was on a... Um, I was on a... Uh, a trip with uh, my friend Bryce and we went to Arizona. He's doing a club promotion and um, it was a great time. I was with this app called Sprouter app, right? They paid for our flights and um, we went on a private jet. We went sick. And then uh, we were there for like four days partying. And then I ended up becoming good friends with uh, this girl named Isabel. She's a great person. She actually comes and visits me time to time in LA. But, um, the night before, I indulged in a bit too much fun, and um, <laughs> I missed. Well, I attempted to go to the airport to make my flight, but I was in an Uber. I put in the wrong address, mm. uh, and my phone died. Mm. <laughs> so here I am, seven a.m. in the middle of Arizona. It's like a hundred and ten degrees. Oh my. I'm sweating. I smell like a bar bathroom and I'm lost and I look homeless at the time now. Oh my God. And so I'm looking around. I'm going inside. I literally have like my wallet, but I don't know how much money I have because my phone's dead. And so I'm like asking people for their phone charger and it's just a sh- And you look mad sketchy. Like, oh, can I get your And I'm hung over and I'm like, can I get your charger? And so I ended up walking for like a couple miles. Now I'm dehydrated and worried. And so I'm like, I'm on a spiritual, spiritual journey at this point. Yeah. I'm like (laughs) fighting demons, man. (laughs) And so finally I had somebody convince, like I convinced someone to let me use their charger for like five minutes. And so I'm, I haven't slept. I haven't done any. So I literally just called my friend Isabel and I was like, "I, I didn't make it. Can you come pick me up? I'm right here. And so I'm sitting there waiting outside with a bag and I took off my shirt at this time and I'm like, oh man, this is brutal. So it's we nice. just went back to her place and I fell asleep. But then the people were mad because I ended up waiting like an hour and a half for me. And I just never showed up. My phone was dead. And so. Oh my God. And that meant they didn't believe your story either, no, right? No, they no. thought you just sold out because yeah. you didn't care. Yeah. They were like, oh no, this guy didn't even try to come back. And I was like, no, I did. I just typed in the wrong address and then my phone died. <laughs> and so. I was walking in the desert. <laughs> literally, bro. Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that I would never want to do again. <laughs> All right. So if you can travel in time, mm-hmm. right. And talk to your younger self, even though you're, you're young now, but what would be like a couple pieces of advice you would, uh, you would give with yourself? everything that I've ever learned up until this point, honestly, I would go back and give myself a camera back when I'm 11 years old. Mm. I would say film everything upload on YouTube. Oof. Honestly, get, get ahead of everything. Honestly. Cause back In like 2012, 2011, I think Casey Neistat came out with like the first ever vlog, right? And then that was successful. And it's people who just watch your daily life. But the people who started early are the biggest now. Like Logan Paul, Jake Paul, like Logan Paul's on the freaking WWE now. And so it's like all from YouTube. And the monetization on YouTube is crazy. Those AdSense are nuts. I don't have my own YouTube which I'm surprised, by the way, that you don't have, you never got into that. It, it's, uh, I, I like to be a character on others. Okay. You know, for me, I, I just don't feel like it's, the content that I make isn't going to be what I like yet because I'm not to the point in time. But if I could go back in time, I, that's exactly what I'd tell myself to do. Literally nice. film everything, upload it. Nice. So, uh, after covering all this stuff, going from left to right, up and down, <laughs> um, is there any advice you would have for either, you know, young athletes trying to get to college or, athletes that are in college right now or any, any pieces of advice you might have for them that we haven't covered. Yeah. I remember in high school, right. uh, The big spec was like, Oh, D one, D one, D one. I went to a D three school, but I got two rings to show for it. Nice. Like the division that you play for doesn't matter. As long as you play and playing something that you love, the friends you meet along the way, like I'm still great friends. Like I stayed at um, 
my boy Drew and Trey's house. They're my roommates all throughout high school. I stayed at their place for like a week and a half in Chicago a couple months ago. I'm great with their parents and like, you're going to make friends along the way. Just if you want to really play, there's a way that you can do it. Like play the sport you love. And even if you can't do inter like intramural in college, like sports will take you a long way. And the lessons that you learn will only be learned if you do sports. So keep on doing them, I guess. Sorry. That was yeah. like very elementary. No, no, no. That's right was there, good. but that's what I would say. What's cool. Like in every episode, someone that mm -hmm. said something different on that point of the podcast. Mm -hmm. So I love that. You know, he just, you gave your honest feedback. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so is there any, anything else you wanted to cover before we uh, conclude? Oh, Jason, I know you like to ask questions at the end. Do you have anything for Mr. Esteban? Well, <laughs> <laughs> We've covered a lot. No, there's... No, so like... He looks like he wants to ask, but he's scared of the answer. No, I'm not, no, I'm not scared. I'm just scared for your listeners. Okay. I'm not just scared oh, of the no. answer. But... Um, <laughs> so there's a, there's a couple of things. So like, I wanted to interject, like, but I was like, ah, let me... It's just rolling. Well, when he was talking about, okay. So when he was talking about, there's not so much to cover for the, the gender um, education. Yeah. I was going to say, well, there's like 50,000 now. So I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. But, it's like, cover now, any, yeah. but I don't, you know, I'm not being offensive to anybody. No, I hear you. Oh, and man. then. Uh, don't even give me stuff. Yeah. And then the other part is. That's a whole other podcast. Bro. <laughs> when we're like, that, exactly. Exactly. And then I was like. But and then I want to say the other thing I'm going to say offline about that. But um, <laughs> so <laughs> when he was talking, when he was talking about the managing the the only fans for the girls, mm -hmm. that must have been very wild and difficult, like dealing with different girls, personalities. Yeah, we kind of we kind of grazed. I, gra we grazed I over just that, yeah. yeah. How did how did that work? I mean, is that something you can even get into or yeah? Okay. Um. So actually, uh, my roommate starting that back up again. So, um, basically, um, with OnlyFans, I'll speak on OnlyFans as a platform. Okay, cool. First. Yeah. So think about it. If you wanted to start, um, merch for the podcast, mm -hmm. what are the main things that you have to go into, but to buy? Like the, the clothing itself, you right. know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Like pay someone to make the logo, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And shipping. then shipping to yeah, shipping. Like, yeah. OnlyFans, all you, you have a phone. Does it cost you anything to go into the bathroom, take a picture, and then uploading it? So that's why it's so lucrative. You could literally- No overhead cost. No overhead cost, no anything. And so that's part of the reason why it's a great platform for people. Now, OnlyFans takes 20% of everything that you make. And so- It's a nice little chunk, but- Yeah. It's yeah, still, no, still it, lucrative. It, 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 but um, <laughs> so what I was doing is that in order to promote these girls is like, you know, I, I go viral on TikTok quite a bit. So I, yeah. I'm familiar with like how the algorithm works and whatever. I know it gets views. Mm -hmm. And some of these girls aren't as well, like in touch with that side, which is fine. So like we would tell them what to post, how to post it, what to caption it. Okay. And then we would run like the messaging. We'd run what they post. We'd tell them what content to send us. And hey, we, you guys have the blueprint. Yeah. And so it, it was very lucrative at the time. And then what happens is like, they think they know what to do. Mm, and they go off on their own. They yeah, get, they get ambitious, and then they come back in a couple months. Did so, you up? Did you upcharge when they came back? Or no, nah, we didn't numbers? even sign them. We kind of just were like, "All right, this is cool. I lasted, but you know, it was too much of a headache because then you got to deal with ten ninety nines and like mm -hmm. LLCs and taxes in different states and how to mm -hmm. send it. And so um, we weren't really ready at that point to launch full scale. I think the most we ever had was like six girls. Yeah. Which is still impressive, you that know. That sounds like a lot though. Even with just six. Yeah. yeah. And so it was it took a lot of bit of time and like we didn't want to do the girls any injustice by not like slacking on them. So we kind of just cut it at that point. But it was a good time. Yeah. And then <laughs> did you guys cut it when when OnlyFans I remember it was a big deal, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember it was months mm -hmm. ago or a year ago. It was fairly recent when OnlyFans changed something or they were gonna cut something. I forgot yeah, what it was. Only, OnlyFans is gonna turn into a non- like uh, a PG 13 gotcha. type of thing where okay. like exclusive content, but it can't be anything revealing. Okay. And they were never going to do that. I don't think like you money. can't, yeah, you're going to miss money. out. Like sex is the longest, it's the oldest trade in the book. You know, you go back into religion, sex. Exactly. It's the <laughs> oldest selling trade in the book. So, right. you know, it sells and you know, people buy it. And yeah. what's crazy now is for these influencers is that if you have one, they just want to see 
Because yeah. like your whole life's public except for what you post on there. Exclusive content. Because you can't buy it. So it's like a genius. A genius. Something someone told me. Shout out to Ricardo. I hope you watch this. <laughs> Ricardo taught me something. He's a very successful businessman. And he told me scarcity creates demands. So mm -hmm. let's say you work five yeah. days out of the week. If you just take, you're like, hey, I'm only available Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going to get the same people, they're like, oh man, he's not available at this time. So I got to really make sure yeah. I get him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So something being exclusive. Mm -hmm brings more work in exactly you know, what I'm saying? You, it's, it's you know like something work. something uh gary v said right uh he's that I, guy's another he's guru. amazing yeah so something he said and it just stuck to me he said that you should underprice the content you put out like meaning like put it out for free like give it away mm -hmm. but you should like overprice access to you mm -hmm. you know what I mean? we, we, it made a lot of sense because a lot of times people are trying to like sell all this stuff for like a sell, high number but like he was like no give it away he's like give it away mm -hmm. but then access to you that's very expensive so that made that made a lot of sense so that's so that's very similar to how i run my own only fan well i have a management yeah. so my only fans account is this isn't like a drop or anything but <laughs> my only fans account is free to subscribe to right yeah and so i have 22 000, or 22.6 Nice. subscribers, but it's free to subscribe to. Okay. So what, would I rather get $10 from a thousand people or $1 from 26,000? Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And so it's like, no brainer. The more people that you have with the potential to get a hold of you, do it. Like you have a platform, but then to access you, you make them pay for it. Let me ask you something, Esteban. And then this, this could be for anyone that's like a business owner. Mm -hmm. Do you have your website, like a website running? I, I have a, um, like a link tree. So like the, re the reason I'm saying that, right. And, and I'm working on mine mm -hmm. myself is because I heard, oh, man, I don't know if it was Joey Diaz. I don't know if it was, or it was one of these big, big mm -hmm. uh, podcasters. And they were talking about how they have their own web website mm -hmm. and they've had it for years and you, they keep the contacts there of the people that log in or whatnot. Mm -hmm. What happens is. Any of these platforms like YouTube, TikTok, mm -hmm. Facebook, I mean, they can die off and another one can come up and you, you lose a lot of contact. Yeah. So like, it's a great idea to have your, like your own sort of way to subscribe self. Well, it's like your self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I know it's a lot of work because you have a lot yeah, of, yeah. But it's like, you know, it, but for any, not just for you, but for mm -hmm. any, any, uh, person is ma making uh, a living out of like social media or digital. Mm -hmm. It's a real, even if, like if uh, whatever platform, YouTube or TikTok. It's like keeping like archives of everything. Yeah, because yep. even if Data. you have, well, even if you have the contacts mostly, because mm -hmm. even if you have like five millions here, mm -hmm. but then you have a hundred thousand people on your website, mm -hmm. that platform falls. Then you already have something. And I mean, once you have a name, doesn't yeah. really matter. People are going to look for you anywhere. Mm -hmm. right. But like you can see the story. Like with people and you probably, you, there's mm -hmm. names you probably don't even know, but you, do you even remember the, the chick named Tila Tequila? Yeah. She's like one of the first yes. ones like on YouTube, right? Yeah. Where's she now? You know what I mean? That's true. Like, and probably she doesn't care or probably she doesn't, or maybe she's still making money. She's, we don't know Just about behind it. behind the scenes. You know, which is all, all cool. All that's cool, you know? Yeah. But the, like, that was a big thing when, when they were saying, oh, okay, so it's cool to have your own ecosystem, mm -hmm. even if it's way smaller. But mm -hmm. you know that, that that's you why, can that's keep why their information. Whenever we do camps for Thirty One Vision, um, everything's free. Mm -hmm. But we do have donations. Mm -hmm. like, like, like when I bring everyone together, and when I give the kids free shirts, free workout bands, free mm -hmm. everything, I tell the parents, "Hey, this is pro bono. If mm -hmm. you wanna, if you wanna donate to us, this is how you do it." And then you subscribe to here. Mm -hmm. So every time we throw a camp, there might be like fifty to hundred kids. Yeah, the donations. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes I'm not happy with the number, mm -hmm. but like Jason said. The network grows though. Yeah. So every time I ha I'm like shooting it's like fish in a barrel. Tree almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like now you keep it and then and it's another thing there, right? About um, I don't know. Like it's a question for you. Mm -hmm. How how are? But well, you have a pretty big following now, mm -hmm. but on your on on your growth, mm -hmm. how were other people with followings about collaborating with you? Were were people cool mm -hmm. or was it hard to get people to collaborate with you? Was it something you were even doing? Uh, great question. <clears throat> so people like in the space, they only really like want to do something if you're popping. So it's like if you, if you're like to benefits them. Yeah, if you're, if you're like a plateau, then like my friends would. But like yeah. the kind of content that I make on TikTok, yeah. I really don't collaborate with anyone. The I, the the reason, and I I don't mean the reason I say that is because you know one of the biggest 
uh, uh, I guess one of the biggest sections of the of the music industry right now, mm. and for for many years now, has been like hip hop and the urban. And one of the biggest things about the rise of hip hop was the amount of collaboration happening. Yep. Yeah, because like they, like people collaborate, and like it would keep like even like I don't know if you noticed, but like artists that maintain themselves over the years, like like Jay Z or Drake mm -hmm. or whatever, they people think they're stooping down, but they just really whenever they see somebody's on the rise, not, like they're yeah. They're higher, mm -hmm. right? But they see that there's other persons on the rise, and they'll collaborate with them, and that yep. pushes yeah, them up. Yeah, literally. And so, like, I know collaborate because, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, the grunge movement like came and went, mm -hmm. metal came and went, mm -hmm. even aggro came and went because those guys would not collab. Like, the bands, yeah, the bands would not collaborate with anybody, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I, like, I wanted to at your level, mm -hmm. I want to ask how are other. How are other uh, uh, influencers. influencers at that level where you're playing at? So, like, uh, if you guys are familiar with Bryce Hall, he has like 22, oh, I know. Yeah, I 22 million subscribers, right? Um, or TikTok followers. Yeah. And uh, me and him are good friends. Oh, yeah. There's there's a time where like he stayed in my house for a little bit oh. while he was looking for his own house. He's pretty big. And um, yeah, I had my nipple pierced with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a YouTube video somewhere. I don't even know, but uh, it's out. But like, people would see us hanging out. And I was kind of new to it, but like people would be like, oh, he's clout chasing to me. And it's Immediately. like, and I'm like, we're just friends, bro. bro but like, I knew what I was doing, right. but I didn't want to like, that's how I didn't feel. Cause I was like fresh from college. I had all my buddies in my frat, like, you mm -hmm. know, frat brothers. And so that's kind of like the vibes that I was getting, but like, nah, people would be like, oh, you're clout chasing, you're clout chasing. And then whispers would go around. And it's like, people only really care about people who can benefit them. Like if you don't, if you don't benefit someone, then you're kind of useless in that industry, which and, is kind of shitty. But. And what's great is like what, like what Jason said, if it's a collaboration, it should be mutually <laughs> beneficial. Like one yeah. person is not really doing another person a favor yeah. if both sides are benefiting. But know? a lot of these huge creators, they don't really care about anybody right. but themselves. Cause it's yeah. like, how are you going to help me? Right. Uh, like, are you going to bring me a brand deal? Right. You know, that's something that I see from like, uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe Rogan brings people up there. Like he brings his friends. He brings people up that are nowhere near in the level of influence he has. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Like he cares about the information. He yeah. does. That's it. And like, for example, today, like when you like, cause people see the camera, but they don't see what's behind the camera. Yeah. Exactly. When you guys walked in today, you walked in just like you're talking to your friends. You yeah. Know what I mean, this is my buddy, <laughs> but, but people, you know, people don't know that. Like people, people can say like, Oh, you're, you're cloud chasing. So like, for example, why are you here today? And it, this is a good thing for people, for, for the kids or whoever's mm -hmm. watching this, right? Why is he here today? He's here because you're my cousin. And why are you here today? You're here because I know you're, you have a business. I have, I believe in you and I invite it. And it's like, Hey, let's, let's do this thing together. I, I believe in what you're doing. So like, it's important for whoever's watching this, believing your friends, believing mm -hmm. the people that, 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 um, that are in your life that are doing things. It doesn't have to be in social media. It can be a, in, in, in a whatever restaurant in whatever field. Believe in the people around you because you don't know like the people around you, what they're going to bring. And you know what you know, sucks What, what exposure, who, who they're going to bring to you. It's, it's very, because like this is what people do. Mm -hmm. People chase the, the guy or the thing mm -hmm. instead of, why don't you, why don't you focus on bringing, like boosting up your friends? And you what? know what sucks about that topic is you hit it right on the nose for, for whatever reason. And we've talked about it in previous episodes. When someone has something going, the people around them will support Nike, Adidas. Yeah. Like they don't know you, bro. Yeah. But, you, but then your friend, buyer, bro. yeah, like you're it's just, like, but your but your friends are starting a restaurant. Yeah. They're starting a clothing brand. Yeah. Bro. I don't care if your shirts are ugly, man. Like I'll give you feedback. Hey, I'm gonna buy a shirt and some pair of shorts. Yeah. These are whack. But do yeah. better. But I'm yeah. gonna support because I know with Nike they don't know who I am. Right. Like they don't, you know. But for whatever reason, the people around you don't support you until you're already like exploding. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. like, oh, I was I've been with you from the jump. No, you were not. No, you were not. <laughs> you were not. It's so crazy. Like I know people. Like when we were talking about how I could help promote the thing, right? And I yeah. was like talking about my management and everything. And I yeah, was like, yeah. I was like, you know, fuck that. I, I got you. I'm gonna just yeah. throw it up, right? There's some super nice of you. And there, there's people, and it was like. And I put on my boy store who owns like, like, I love seeing people do their own thing. Yeah. And like, you don't know how much like a little repost or something means for someone who's on the come up. Yeah. It's like, if your friends really support you, 
then just put the shit up on your story. Like yeah. more eyes on it. It's like, it's not going to affect you or anything, but yeah. it does say a lot to the person. And it, it's encouraging too. Cause yeah. it's like more eyes on it, the more people care. And it's like the least you could do, like this guy's busting his ass. Can I put Should it on my story? It. Like, yeah, just fucking do that. Yeah, man. And, and, and like, like you said, like it takes two seconds. Literally. Like, just go there. Like, why does it have to benefit you for you to repost something? Or why do you have to be in it? Like I repost things that I am not a part of at all. Exactly. But, but I, I see, I see your why. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, why not? Just, just. Yeah. yeah that, that's kind of like, I was like, bro, I'm not going to fucking go through my management. And just, boom. And, so, that, and that's why I love that you do comedy because in my opinion, mm -hmm. It's like sex, but comedy's like right there. Like, who doesn't like to laugh? Bro, I wish I could be a fuck boy and just have a pretty face on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> that make it so much easier, bro. But now I gotta make people laugh. And I'm like, ah, but I enjoy that though, you know? Yeah. Like if I could think about some, I have some outrageous ideas. I don't even know how, how I think of them. They just come into my head and I like posting it. Like, you know what? Let's end on that topic. So comedy is something that's really hard to do because it's such a broad range, you know? So how do you find that creativity to continue to not go stale, but still keep staying fresh? You know, that's a good topic. So it's basically throwing shit at the wall until it sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Something will stick, right? Yeah. And so, and it's funny because uh, my most viral video of all time is something that even if you don't speak English, you could watch it and laugh, right? I'm speaking English and then I'll show you guys right now just off the record, but um, it has like 52 million views and I posted it multiple times. It has over 120 million views. Oh my yeah. goodness. But we, we can definitely put it in the bottom a, corner yeah, or something later on the, on the podcast. But yeah. it's, it's, def it's this one. Oh, I saw this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put it up. I'll put it up on the... <laughs> Guys can do this thing too, watch. Impressive, right? <laughs> Impressive, right? That took 10 seconds. 10 <laughs> seconds. 4.7 no. mil. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna. All right, you, you can like cue it in the Yeah, corner. I'm gonna cue it in. <laughs> but, um, like, I, and it's, like, I just had to talk with my friend's podcast too yeah. about uh, what to post, what to post. Like, I probably have 7,000 videos on TikTok. Half yeah. of them are privated because they yeah. didn't do good. Yeah. But, like, the ones that do good do great. You know, like I, I posted one two days ago and it wasn't even about something funny. It was about something like pretty fucked up that I saw on TikTok. Yeah. It was, uh, this girl's, this woman's husband of 14 years installed a camera in her, in his daughter's shower. Oh, my oh goodness. Goodness. That's rough. and like she found it cause she tried to put a light bulb in and there was a camera up there and I saw it and Ugh. the video was blown up. I think it had like a hundred million views in a day. That's mm. tough. And so I posted, I was like, you got to be some sick human to put a camera into your own daughter's shower. That's crazy. Yeah, and I bro. said, they're going to tear you up in prison and I'm here for it. Yeah. And like that video is at 2 million views in a day. Right. Yeah. And it's, so it's like, and it wasn't even comedy. Like you said, no, no, no. It was just like, that just reeked me to my bones. I'm like, how can somebody do that? So like, I, I just like posting real content and if it doesn't make me laugh, I don't post it. So okay. it's like, that's kind of how I make it. I'll never really like, sell out i'll always try to like put my own spin onto something mm -hmm. but i wish like with my platform i could like talk about more serious stuff without being like oh this is a funny guy you know because like but i i'm working towards it just like i got out of the talking like a little kid yeah. people still call me bootleg jake paul and i'm cool with that <laughs> but <laughs> i'm cool with that but um yeah dude it's basically just trying stuff until it fits you know so it's not content for you it's content for the people viewing you know, yeah. like not for myself, but for others. And I'm cool with that, but and as long as I enjoy it. And that's like a wrinkle in advertising and marketing. Yeah, is exactly. Getting into someone's psyche and be like, mm -hmm. what makes you tick? Like mm -hmm. what makes you want to double tap? Mm -hmm. That's it. You, you know, I want to, before we end, I want to circle back to, I'm just, cause I have a little circle of camera there. Mm -hmm. So I want to circle back to the collaborations. And like, I have a, a pretty sizable following, obviously not nothing close to yours. Yeah. I'm not a superstar. <laughs> anything, but you know, I've, I've, you know, I've had a uh, a million views on the, on videos. I've had mm -hmm. I have a couple that are like over four hundred five thousand hundred thousand. So it's mm -hmm. not huge, but it's it's a there's a a dent happening with it. And some I like I'm I work with I collaborate with people, mm -hmm. and something that I've that I've tried to focus and it's helped me out a mm -hmm. lot in my collaborations is. First, I when like when I, I cause I, I'm in the, I'm on the app, mm -hmm. so like I watch and stuff that that I like. I'm not just collaborating with people because of the following. Mm -hmm. The stuff that I can that I 
it's just, it just re resonates with me. But I collaborate with people that are like 30 to 20,000 followers under me. Mm -hmm. okay. I never look for people that are above my, mm -hmm. and like, they're always super happy that I reach out and I reach mm -hmm. out to them. And, and like, I've, I've noticed that in the collaboration game, people are always trying to reach out to someone like huge. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, bro, why don't you just someone like around your level? Yeah, like, like the way I feel about it is, and like I, my way doesn't have to be the right way, but like, you know, it's like, if you work with people that are on your circle mm -hmm. or below, like it feels so great. It feels good when yeah. somebody that's above pull you up, right? Yeah. So why don't you practice that? Like pull up other people. Yeah, pay for I'm not, yeah. And well, you have to, you have to have a like mind. I'm not saying just, you know, because mm -hmm. of what are you going to do? But if you're in the collaboration game, like I never, bro, I don't reach out to people that are like half, I, I barely have, I think I've only have twice because they follow me mm -hmm. because they follow me. Then I send a message or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like other than that, because I feel like, one, I really feel like it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be, but like, and that's how I feel about it. You know, yeah. like, because it takes work, man. I've been, like, I've been putting in work, man. It mm -hmm. takes work to get, to get. Yeah, it's uh, not an overnight thing. Yeah. It, it takes, takes work. Time. And then, so like, whenever you're reaching out to somebody and there is no, you have nothing in common. There's no dialogue. There's no, no friendship, nothing. You're right. just only reaching out to have more exposure. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, bro, like, you know, this person worked a lot and you're just exactly. telling them, you know what I mean? For mm -hmm. free, you want to, yeah. it's, it's just, just yeah. so I think it's super cool. And like for, for anybody that's watching this, mm -hmm. cause I know you have a big following, everybody watching this and that is in that lane that want to mm -hmm. grow, that want to have a bigger following. Hey man, reach out to, like, you got 500 following followers. Reach out to somebody that's got 500. Reach yeah, out to somebody that's got 200. Who the next up is seriously. Do you know what I mean? That that brings it back because I, I totally forgot about that, but it's definitely on that same point, right? So this is another like crazy story. I don't try to keep it short, but um, don't keep. Are you in a hurry? No. Oh, okay, okay. No, then I'll go ahead. into the details. Yeah, I'll go into the details. We're so good. this is how small and crazy the world is, right? So the summer of 2020, when I was doing TikTok, right? Um. And let my mistakes be a learning lesson because I'm not going to sugarcoat anything or anything. I'm just very, I'm a very lucky idiot, right? <laughs> that That's your water, by the way, because okay. I know you've been talking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so I made the poor decision to drink and drive, right? Mm. Luckily, no rest or anything. I, I, like I said, I'm a lucky idiot, right? Yeah. I totaled my car. So I disappointed my parents. I didn't know what I was doing. I had to go to college back without a car. Right. So two days after that, I was outside of the DMV and I'm on TikTok live trying to scoundrel up some money. Right. <laughs> yeah, so send some funds. And, and so somebody reaches out. His name's Matt's world. Right. He's sending me like donations to make me click his name. Mm. So when you click whoever donates, it pops up. I'm like, thanks, Matt's world. Cause I'm only looking for the girls, right? right. Donating. Yeah. Man. So he keeps on sending them. I click it and I'm like, dude had like 7 million followers. Wow. Verified. Just from you going live. And, then and, and I only had like maybe 400,000 at the time. Yeah. And so I follow him back. He messages me. He goes, yo dude, I really like your content. Like, where are you in the keys? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, yo, how far are you from this address? He's in Miami. Oh. But I just totaled my car. How am I going to get there? So I steal my mom's car. Oh. <laughs> you're already you're already in the doghouse. <laughs> of course, that that makes sense, right? But oh. I I had to because oh. I you never can't pass up that opportunity. I never in a million years. I was like, this guy's verified. He's living in a mansion, all from social media. You can you can let learn me so learn. Much. Yeah, and Bro, he reached out to you. That's the yeah, awesome yeah. part. So that day, I go up to Miami. <laughs> And nice. I stay the night there, right? And I got to be back before my mom is at work. She has to work oh at like God. seven. And it's, it, I don't get there till seven. <laughs> and so like seven and I'm like, and I'm just meeting all these people and there's other creators. And I'm like, how do you guys do all this? Social media. And I'm like, what? That's it? And so they put me on games. So he ended up hooking me up with a brand deal. And like, I started making money and there's a girl on TikTok, right? Because uh, at the time I had more followers than her. And now she has like almost a million on Instagram, nice. like 5 million on TikTok. Her name's Faith Ordway. Right? Mm -hmm. Very beautiful girl, right? She, um, I reached out to her and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm going to this mansion in Miami. 
and like these guys seem pretty legit on social media. Like I'm going to learn a lot. Like you want to come? So she came and now she's like pretty, pretty, fr- like pretty famous. She obviously used what they taught yeah, her. She's, and- she's pretty famous. She lives out in LA. And so now my boy, Matt, I met him, right. Met all those people, right. Boom. So that was in the summer come December. Uh, right before I started my OnlyFans, some kid that I didn't even remember meeting at that house hits me up and goes, yo, what's up, dude? Nice seeing you. Like, hey, I'm down in the Keys, like me and like my boy and like our girls are coming. Like, you live down there, right? And I was like, yeah. And I don't, I don't hey, know who, who is it is. <laughs> I don't know who he is. And when he makes his voice, like the the, the voices of his boys, yeah. he gets super LA. Yeah. yeah. Super yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, yo, like you want to come hang out with us? And I'm like, yeah sure and so he picks me up we stay at this hotel and like i'm already tight with everybody in qs like those are my people Mm -hmm. and so now i'm showing them a great time still don't really remember them (laughs) but i i looked up one of my boys girls who's like famous in brazil like actually like famous like millions on youtube whatever she just did a um interview with uh millie bobby brown who was like and and so i'm hanging around with them then they look at me and they go uh Yo, we have an extra room in the mansion. You, you like want to stay? And I'm sure, like, sure, I'll sacrifice. I go, mm, <laughs> how big's the room? No, I was, I was like, of course. I'm like, my parents live in a trailer. I'm sleeping on the floor. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> and so that's where I met my current roommate, and wow. we started doing the OnlyFans stuff. And look, how and so just out. one person reaching out to me in a stolen car. <laughs> <laughs> And you can do it. Silver lining, <laughs> silver lining. <laughs> but it's so crazy reaching out that literally, and like now Matt, like whenever, you know, people go in and out of phases, right? Some people are up, some people are down. Matt always has a place to stay at my house, right? His car has been parked in our thing in LA for like <laughs> a year now. <laughs> but like, I, I use him, but like, he's like my OG. I literally call him my OG because he, without him reaching out to me that day, put you on game. I wouldn't known anybody, bro. And so, like, it's kind of crazy how one act of, one act I'm gonna, bro, for I, real. I'm gonna add some to that. Um, so this is something that's been going on with me recently. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, um, uh, about a month ago, I was like, and I want to connect with some more producers and some more like mm-hmm. uh, uh, people are doing social media. And so I put on a hashtag, which was um, product uh, podcast production hashtag, and. I put it and like a lot of posts start popping up and like this guy with a, a, the podcast thing popped up and I like what he was saying. So I, I gave it a like, you know, I uh, put a comment and he had like two views or whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So the guy followed me back. It's like, Hey, thank you, man. Whatnot. So like now I'm seeing his stuff and like, but I'm seeing the people he's interviewing is in, like, he's interviewing famous people on, on the, the niche. It's like mm-hmm. a Spanish, but it's like, interviewing some fans like man and it's not, it doesn't have a lot of views to get the channel starting mm-hmm. you know so like I, I i didn't make contact with him because of the people he's interviewing mm-hmm. i was just trying to like reach out to people yeah and i made contact with them and like i was one of the first mm-hmm. people to comment so he come back and then we started like uh, uh dming you know mm-hmm. and like after we're dming i'm seeing all the like the people he's getting i was like wow he's getting some big people there mm-hmm. so now other creators see that he follows me mm-hmm. So now they start following me. And then Check I start effect. like, yeah, literally. I, so, so now it's like, now it's like, I've been in touch with like, it's like the fifth or sixth producer, like people behind camera, like the people that do the camera mm-hmm. work. And like, like it's like the, f- out of that interaction and, and I'm still mm-hmm. in contact with them, but he's in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm still in contact with him. Mm-hmm. But that out of that interaction, I've gotten interactions with other producers that are, some guys are here in Miami, some guys are in Lakeland. And it's like, and but the reason I did it, like, dead honest, the reason I did it was just to reach out to people with similar content. I was not looking for for like self beneficial yeah. stuff. It, well, I, I didn't reach out. I, I didn't know the guy. It's not, it, like I wasn't reaching for. Mm-hmm. And I think that yes, the content like if like I do this for a living, so yes, the content matters. Yes. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's if once you're doing something and you're getting paid, it's not all altruism. Yeah. You know, you're getting paid. But at the same time, you got like if you match that and you put giving in it, like like let me just let me just go and, and, and put a good comment. Let me mm-hmm. just go and put a yeah. like it doesn't have to be chasing, man. Like yeah. like and everything, like, bro, it's 
And and the cool thing about that is people feel it. Mm-hmm. When you're when it's chasing, people feel it and it's awkward. Or like when yeah. you feel like you're being yeah, because like a nuisance, you know, it's like because and I think you feel it more when you like because you weren't born into fame. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when you're not born into fame, you know how it is to have a regular friend. Because mm-hmm. people are born into they don't know. So it's like but you know, so like when somebody comes on, like, why are you being so nice? Or you're only being nice to me mm-hmm. because I that out, yeah. you're in, you know, like, what if, what if all this falls off tomorrow? Are you going to be, yeah. are mm-hmm. you going to be nice to me like that? Segue. All right. To one thing. I've, I've, my, my TikTok platform has like mm-hmm. grown like 50 to one to my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, like, how do you feel about this? Because I got an issue with it. I got an issue with people. <laughs> Look, when Facebook, when Instagram first came out, right? Mm-hmm. All the, which is all the Facebook people, right? Used to throw shade on Instagram because mm-hmm. they were like, oh, Facebook is the thing. Yeah. Then Instagram became the thing. Yep. I remember that. So now, now people like, I'm like, yo, attention is attention. Doesn't matter. But now people, mm-hmm. if you have a big TikTok following, but you don't have a big in- Instagram follow. They oh, they throw shade. It's like, yo, it's attention. People find what ways is, to throw like, shade. I, was, I, I wonder how you feel about Bro. that. So it's the ten- you're, it's attention. You know. So there you mm, go. A, a yeah, few, yeah, get them started. Get them started. Right. <laughs> so I have two point two million, almost two point three million on TikTok. I yeah. have eighty thousand on Instagram. Right. So the the people with a lot of following. Yeah. Are the fuck boys or the girls with <laughs> badass, right? I, I got know. nothing wrong with it. Nothing right. wrong with it. So I was like, I'm a finesse it. I'm gonna get my Instagram followers. I'm not gonna yeah. buy them. Right. So what I did is I streamed a fight on my Instagram live, but I made my Instagram private and promoted that video on TikTok. That video blew up. Oh. So I got 60,000 followers all trying wow. to watch the fight like that. <laughs> Finessed. But Genius. now, like every time I post or something, like my Instagram followers are going down, which is I'm fine with because it's yeah. getting all the whack people out that were just there for that. Right. But you yeah, know, that's some bullshit. I need to follow me on Instagram too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then another crazy thing. I don't oh, know. He, why. Oh, he went over there. Okay. He finally approved. I see. <laughs> he finally came over. And said, hey, you know what? You're cool. All right. Cool. So I, I'm verified on TikTok, right? Okay. And I bought the eight dollar check mark on Twitter. Thank you, Elon. So I'm verified on Twitter too. <laughs> But um, so the way that I got verified on TikTok is I uh, I finessed again. And so there isn't a way to like, you have to go through this process. It's way harder now, but back in the day, it's like, who, who did you know or whatever? But I made a video where I, um, I Photoshopped it next to my account and I screenshotted it, but I had a, in a phone, but I was texting myself. So it looked like my mom sent it to me. And so I was deleting every other message. So it looked like my mom sent me a screenshot and saying, oh my God, you got verified on TikTok. And it was bullshit because I was never verified. Oh my God. And so I Photoshopped it and I made a TikTok about that. And I was like, I was like, my mom, da, 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 she was so happy for me. I got verified and then it's not there anymore. Somebody reached out. I was like, oh, dude, this is some bullshit. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. What? Fucking literally in a week, I got verified. What? <laughs> Finesse the I, level a thousand. I swear TikTok. on every and so it's like if you want something done, there's a way to do it somehow. Mm. Yeah, somehow. Yeah. Way. And so as soon as that happened, I got the uh tattoo right here. Some people <laughs> might think it's corny, but I got the verified tattoo. That's a, man, you know <laughs> okay. that, I would I would have never thought about anything like that. It takes Me a neither. level, it takes a Me level either. of I would um, try to do it the uh the old fashioned way. You know what you know what it is as well? And I've no, I've noticed um so i have a knack for like production i like it mm-hmm. i like the i like lighting i like i like mm-hmm. the cameras i like i like all that sound um but i noticed that social media there's people like sports that are naturally geared yeah for mm-hmm. it and it's not like because a lot of people that's like since it's so new mm-hmm. people look at somebody and they're like how are you getting so much views well how can you how can you run that fast and catch a ball like there's mm-hmm. training can only get you so far like like you were saying about mm-hmm. the sport where you just came in or was the sport javelin and just can you through the thing yeah and i was like 
With yeah. people are training for years. Bro, training. Yeah. It's it's people just people are on college scholarships. Na- nature's not fair. Yeah. Nature's not fair. Training, like obviously training it at a certain yeah. level. When you're paired with another guy, your height, mm-hmm. your weight runs as fast as you. Okay, now it's training. Yeah, but. Not Train. everyone's dealt the same hand of cards, you know? Like, some place, people's yeah. got the 21 off, too. Oh. I mean, my, people bust. Like, my, like, my, my jiu-jitsu the coach, he goes, he's a Brazilian guy. He's very funny. He's very cool. And he goes, like, we were talking about, like, what things work with who. And he was like, wow. Like, with the, I don't want to do the accent because it, it'll be disrespectful. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he was like, well, um, he's like, this will work with most people. He was like, because most people... When they go into, and it was so great, the explanation he gave. It's like, when they enter a house, most people will go in through the door. Mm -hmm. So when someone goes in through the door, there's a way to stop it. And you, Mm -hmm. it's like, but there's people, once in a while, you're going to encounter people that come in through the house through the roof. Those people, (laughs) this is not going (laughs) to, and it was like, I was like, hmm. It was like, he was like, imagine doing jujitsu on a bear. It's like, like, ah, okay. Like (laughs) some people it's not going to work on because it's so much, the different, the natural difference is so big. Yeah. That it's just, don't matter what you do, it's just not going to happen. That's why there's weight classes in the UFC. It's like, weight classes. (laughs) you're not going to put up. I love to see whenever I see a video, like the fight videos. And I see a little guy getting like, I don't, I'm not saying I love to see a little guy get beat up. Right. I do. <laughs> but whenever <laughs> I see, it itself, yeah. whenever I see a video uh, of a little guy, mm-hmm. especially when they're starting the fight, mm-hmm. which I like those when they're starting the fight and they get beat up. I, I usually comment brought to you by the like, size. Don't matter guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like the size don't matter. That's a lie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. The occasional lucky bro. You could be the best fighter in the world. One punch to the jaw, somebody who's not that good, you're out. It's like, that's it. You know, but man. nine, but but nine out of ten. Yeah, no, the big the guy's big guy's gonna grab you, <laughs> put you in the floor. He's gonna use you as a mop. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, uh, Stevie, man, I really want to thank you, bro, for giving thank your you, time. Man. Thanks, not for just from Marathon, but from Cali, man. Oh no, like, of we course, bro. You. I love this stuff, so. Jason. Thank you for chiming in, man. So, guys, that wraps it up for us. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share. All right. 100% do it, okay? Listen to the man. (laughs) (laughs) Deuces, guys. Thank you.